then trying to do practical experience, it came out a new element, which is really new for architecture, that improvisation is possible. Mm -hmm. Architecture was always sought for eternity. Yeah. And improvisation, for architects in the beginning, it was sounding strange. Architecture can be improvised. Mm -hmm. And so I made uh, uh, several experiments. First time letting the people work it out their project. But then I realized that the important is the trial and error process. That is getting down from the paper and getting to the reality. And, uh, okay, it is only last year that I discovered this way of experiment that I leave material for people and they build it. This is possible with the space chain structures because it's so easy to assemble. Mm -hmm. There is an order problem. You know, if I'm looking at uh, actually what's called avant-garde architecture, I don't know, Gary or Azadi, I can uh, talk with Gary, it is an error because they make sculptures. It is sculpture, a large sculpture, but architecture is different. Mm -hmm. Architecture is an inside. Yeah. It is the inside that is important. Okay. Yeah. So I'm trying to determine architect as the sculptor of the void. An architect doesn't sculpt, shouldn't sculpt an object, but it is exactly the empty space what he has uh, that till the last period this was technically impossible, surely it was uh, uh, methods, uh, uh, techniques used earlier. Uh, like for example, somebody like Le Corbusier made beautiful sculptures of buildings, but the insides are banal. Exactly this, this except the tentative etranchon, which was technically too difficult. Mm -hmm. With the double skin and so on. Mm -hmm. And I think that architecture architects should change in a way their orientation. From one side I'm telling that uh, conception and realization of his personal environment technically is possible. This is what I was showing with the experiments. So students generally ask, so then what should do an architect? So I was telling the architect is the artist of the, of the space. In music, popular music, there are many people who can do. This didn't uh, make any difficulties for artists to be uh, in music to find their existence. So I think that's where architects can come in. And in a way it's a new role for the architect because we were not prepared to it. When I was going to school, this would be absurd even to tell it. Mm -hmm. But now we start a new situation. And all this has as well different corollaries. 
I am thinking at the, at the most important for the architect's field that understand that we build too much. I was trying to tell today with the refugee problem that the refugee problem is essentially a way for architecture and urban planning as a laboratory. It is exceptional as a a real case, hundreds of years we didn't have that something like a city building itself up by people. And uh, we need this laboratory. I use all this to explain this laboratory. It's at the beach side. Don't make them plans. Let them settle the beach side way because you can move it if uh, you are angry with your neighbor you change your orientation that means architecture has to adapt to social reality it's a contrary to the Bauhaus who looks at abstract optimum, but I don't believe in abstract optimum. I think that optimum is personal, and uh, you cannot have uh, uh, the reasoning of the Bauhaus. And if I'm speaking about the laboratory, the laboratory will not give norms. It will be simply a learning by experience. Yeah, it's typical. One of them is communication, which is uh, essential. And with the actual situation, we can discover that somehow a city today as it is today conceived, seems to be somewhat absurd. I will try to explain the reason. City was always based on proximity. In the Middle Ages or earlier, you needed the proximity for defense within the walls. Outside of the walls, you were not protected. That means it was a The 19th century, essentially already the Romans, who discovered canalization and uh, supply networks. This created as well a proximity. You couldn't have a house very far away because uh, you are disconnected. Uh, it's typical that in 57, when I wrote the architecture mobile, I told you that there is a difficulty with the phone network. But the phone network is today in your pocket. The electricity. It's a battery. Uh, you can buy electricity in the supermarket. It is, uh, you have a battery, you leave it there, you take another field panel, for example. And uh, so it stays the water. I have for this a little story I was writing in 77 I was sent by UNESCO in different uh, what was called developing countries uh, 
and the particular year was traveling Arab region and visiting different countries. Uh, I don't know, Yemen and Sudan, all kinds of countries to be, you cannot easily visit. And uh, there in one of these countries, they were showing me a new settlement. Okay. So automatically I asked, and surely you have water. No, the water arrives from the capital, mm. 10 kilometers away, uh, by uh, lorries. Mm -hmm. So I asked, and you don't have rain? Yes, we have rain. Why are you not capping the water? It is not water. It was. <laughs> <laughs> But we have nearly in all region, all inhabited region, sufficient rainwater, what is necessary. A drinking water, people drink a bottle of water, which can be delivered by a delivery organization. Yes. So in a way, Amazon replaces the networks from before. So the city can be scattered. That's again a new fact. And we are not human. We don't have necessity necessarily the compact city farm. So I could imagine in a way really villages or scattered or used uh, a more concentrated farm for a small community. And uh, leaving the uh, area free, we need it for agriculture, we need it because it's pleasant, uh, we need it as environment. And in our cities, uh, practically the parking takes the place. And if architecture changes today. That's simply our way of living. It gives new possibilities. And this, this, all these principles, I am not telling that I invented it. I tell others saying, it is in invention. Invention, it's a long-term process. And then it always was uh, a joke. But who actually invented Gothic style? <laughs> Obviously, it's impossible. Mm -hmm. It was growing in a somewhat erratic way. And that's the situation. And we are now in the middle of the process. Uh, our life today is very dissemblable of the period when I was born, 97 years ago. It is not the same city, it's not the same way people live. Initiate the process with a physical, I think, you know, what you talked about, uh, the internet and that we are connected in a different way, I think is super important. But what I find very interesting that after uh, coming then together and where we start improvising, we yeah. also have a physical kind of yeah. counterpiece. Yeah, you see in other fields, uh, a new technology opened in other way of life when people invented writing change, everything changed after that. I imagine when the 
our ancestors, or whatever animal it was, and he invented the articulate language. But this was the biggest revolution imaginable. Yeah. And we, uh, I'm speaking about architecture, but there is a, a, a similar revolution going on. We are not the same animal than my grandfather were. Because, because of the uh, uh, multiple opening mm -hmm. yep. in communication, in uh, techniques, in, in thinking. And uh, so uh, this is really uh, my conclusion. We are going to become an other type of enemy. And we we'll see what it will come. I imagine uh, if somebody would ask uh, the monkey, huh? you will develop into a human. And I think this would be quite important uh, as a practical operation in the education. Our education in all fields is the old time. The teacher tells rules and that's that way. But there is the other type of education already invented quite a time ago that the educated person has to invent and that's, uh, that's what necessary in different fields, for example, in architecture. It will be done, I don't know in what way, but it's... Uh, ...to carry you to this, this drawing, this computer calculation. Mm -hmm. I am doing it that way. Mm -hmm. And this is how you have mm -hmm. to do it. So this is really the big change. Uh, this is why the uh, uh, interdependence of techniques and social change, they are not separate things. They make this possibility. And this is what I feel important. The lab sheets. If I knew, it's very simple, but this was all the time then by seeing movie people. I should know. The why to make a, a prefabricated lampshade today when you have this material and you can handle it. It's, it's very different. Mm -hmm. yes. And this was always my point. I am trying to launch the idea and I don't know what will come out mm -hmm. of it. It's not I'm doing it. Mm -hmm. Okay. You see you have the space frames structures. We were very good friends with Waxman. Mm -hmm. But Waxman was too much influenced by prefabrication. Mm -hmm. You can do a space frame without uh, complicated notes, without motors. You can avoid everything. Take care, that's a space frame. Mm -hmm. So, with this thing, you can improvise and you can improvise that way. A space frame, it's all the models, they are uh, made for the community of the engineer, but that's false because the engineer makes an exact calculation. 
the sigvax by probability. You know, the sigma of the material. This is a statistical calculation. So you can statistically calculate all the world. And that's what I am doing with this thing. When I am constructing this thing, I'm telling you, now lift it. Look at the deformation. The deformation tells you everything. This is really where modern technology comes in. The old structures demand enormous amount of material. So you have to try to calculate. But if I am doing domes with bamboo, I don't need to calculate. You do it in it's okay. That's uh, something that musician discovered a very long time. That's very nice, the written music, but essentially the improvised and uh, the great classical composers, they were improvising in their head when they wrote it. So, so that's uh, what I think uh, is the process in an architecture, in urban design the same thing. A road network, it works in certain situation and it's absolutely unusable in certain other situations. Twice a day or x times a year. So why not improvise one I was working at MIT and working with computers and tried for a program. I was making voluntary errors with the remark, anybody can do these errors. And the big computer system of the East Coast American universities got literally mad furious what did the computer do? Improvised, told me obscene words and anything. So, artificial imagination, mm -hmm. it's essentially the program could be done that way, that you have an, it's an input to the computer. It goes the normal process, but every step you link it to a other kind of access to the memory, which is association. For example, if you see a cloud, you uh, see a form of the cloud, that means a sort of a pattern recognition. And you can produce artificial imagination. What it will do, I don't know, it is the same thing. Building their first year students is the first time they come in contact with architecture. So we give them a kind of w one element that you can buy in any store. It's five meter longs and they have to start to bring it together. And we only what we give them is, is a, a first type of, of framework, which they build themselves. 
So they built that, yeah, but we yeah. gave them the first rules. Yeah, yes. As they have against, let's so to speak, yeah. against gravity, so to speak. Yeah. So they have a first framework. Mm -hmm. This only holds up itself, so it's not a mega structure. Yeah. It's really just setting a framework. That's a bit before. And what they end up with is this. So they improvised yeah. also, yeah. but also yeah. planned yeah. a lot. It's really very good. <laughs> Oh, I'm glad. <laughs> there is a thing that is important, but I mean to explain. You have to conceive it possible that no foundation is necessary. Mm -hmm. Yes. The foundation is the trap, really excellent. And they're 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 doing everything themselves. Yeah. I think what is very interesting is that there, there I think there needs to be a first element, you know, like your rings to make people. There needs to be a first element, so that the people have something to also work with and to to bring it together, so to speak. See, really, you know, essentially. The Meccano and uh, all these uh, children toys. Mm -hmm. I used it. Mm -hmm. And uh, the difference when you change the scale is mm -hmm. very uh, important because people don't have the imagination to see a different scale. True, yeah. And therefore, you know, for me, a uh, system, I learned it by modeling. And the paper that's only uh, for memory. The, the modeling shows me only how to, how to operate it. Mm -hmm. But what the thing is, I know it only after the large scale. Mm -hmm. The model doesn't show. The inside of this, I saw with a three-dimensional camera. It's inimaginable. Mm -hmm. But I cannot imagine it without seeing. And I find that it's, uh, really, it's wonderful that you do it in real scale. Yes, it's a big that challenge. Is, uh, <laughs> sure, sure, because people seeing it from the inside, mm. Exactly. It is different. Now, for us, it's exactly what you said before, that what counts in architecture is the, the inside. Yeah. It's really what, what we create around us. And the difficulty, and maybe regarding, uh, you know, where the architect comes in, is really maybe to provide possibilities or, or tools yeah. how to create such an inside, how we, we finally are able to, to kind of paint into space. Space... Is a uh, very limited resource, and area is an even more limited. <laughs> so you can use better space <coughs> to save area. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, it's normal. Everybody feels it. I think, uh, and uh, this you were doing in Zurich. In it's, uh, as you see, I found something uh, very important, that's a technicity, that I'm telling, that I am trying to do structures where you don't need exactitude. Mm -hmm. People, if they if it, inexactitude is permitted, <laughs> you are not advice. And this is the quote of what I was telling about classical space frame structure. The Mero system, it mm -hmm. was wonderful, except when you dismounted it, it couldn't be used mm -hmm. anymore because it got uh, deformed. Mm -hmm. And yeah. uh, they are the practical, important things, mm -hmm. uh, like uh, 
kitchen rules, cooking rules. Mm -hmm. the, uh, if uh, you give a cooking rule that you have so many milligrams of salt, this will never work. If you tell, put the salt in it, that this, it yeah. works. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, uh, and uh, that's very good. And it's interesting uh, if you permit in exactitude. Mm -hmm. You know, in this, uh, I'm calling it the uh, rod net, mm -hmm. because there are no notes. That means there are two mm -hmm. rods. But you have to start with geometry. I started. Yeah. I swear with rigorous geometry. And then I discovered yeah. that it's not necessary. But for the start, it's right that you know it. Yeah, it's, I think so. But yeah. it's mm -hmm. not a decisive uh, uh, thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so that's. Uh, but I think in, in all what you're saying, I think what, what is seems to me important is that it's not a linear process but a, a, an iterative process because a trial and error always includes the, the unknown and wherever you may go with that maybe it's something completely different but it's iterative so you, you kind of trace first trajectories but they may get deviated in whatever sense I don't know that I think that somehow the idea would be if there would exist a recipes like in cooking, it's very elastic mm -hmm. recipes. <laughs> mm -hmm. Uh, you know, it's, uh, I am using cartoon brands uh, to explain mm -hmm. things, and this works very well. Uh, to, to a techniques, but the different irregular structures, it is explained uh, for people in one page, A4 size, and not insisting on the form, but how to do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. It's not about form. Yeah. yeah. And this works. And when I was working in India, I didn't have a common language mm -hmm. to speak to, but it's very simple to all mix. Mm -hmm. Then end the story. Mm -hmm. And that caption of four words, that is always easy. Somebody translates it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They are all very old, uh, very old techniques. It is not me who discovered it. Mm -hmm. But we have to use this old techniques. Mm -hmm. I, believe so. I, I personally believe exactly that the uh, the new technologies bring also the possibility again to use very low-tech kind of means in order to create space. Yeah, but people don't really have so And this original, there are slideshows that means an image, I don't know, uh, uh, so many seconds, and it comes, and this works, and people understand mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Till this point, that they need a 
é pocketbook é deixa é de uhum. pocketbook é assim pocketbook price uhum. because it is uh, and it is a way to contact because we had here the election now mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I would ask the candidate okay you have a program but draw it <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's good. That's good. That's perfect. But the old answer comes out. Yeah, true. They are right. empty words. Yeah. <laughs> I was right. uh, at the uh, Swiss professor. Uh, somebody was like, But how are you drawing freedom? So I said, I cannot draw freedom because freedom doesn't exist. I can draw freedom to walk, freedom to sit down, freedom to stand down, freedom to eat. But the abstract freedom, mm -hmm. this is mm -hmm. for the politicians. <laughs> and they are all using this abstract word. Therefore, I mean, I'm sorry, I can't, couldn't even think about this experiment. But I really uh, would be happy to tell the candidates draw up a proposal. Yeah, that would be perfect. That would be quite a a gallery of of, of personalities. <laughs> <laughs> they would still come up. That's with really tricks. great. <laughs> you can try this. In Switzerland, it's easier because that canton system. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, or they dispersed. Here there are some of them. This is uh, the whole political. Uh, uh, it's a political proposition. <laughs> Not that way. That's mm -hmm. And uh, I, I think uh, this is the way, and it is on paper, but you have, can do it uh, mm -hmm. so easily. Yes. Uh, yeah. After all, uh, this printing and this, it is the same digital series. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But for you, certainly, next to your hands, the pencil has been an extremely important. For you, the pencil has been an extremely important tool, tool as you yeah. always communicated through your drawings. Yeah. You have to precise with the drawing. You know, the drawing and the text, they complete each other. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And That's I am okay. using generally <laughs> three texts. Mm -hmm. uh, there is the drawing, there is the text, and the remark of the text. They <laughs> uh, are, uh, I'm using generally a dog who makes the critical remark. <laughs> <laughs> I like dogs. <laughs> so, so I think. Can yes, listen, uh, really, I mean, yeah. there's more there. They're for you. They're all for you. And we really appreciate you took your time. And we also brought you this. Now, this is. No, no, we already have this. <laughs> Not all of you. Uh, these are two books. The, the second one, it's we call it uh, yeah. ambitiously yeah. all about space. Yeah. A bit ambitious, <laughs> but the second book is uh, is about House One, about this yeah. exercise, and you yeah. you see literally yeah. everything that the students did. Yeah. So that's in our ateliers, yeah. and uh, there's also writing. So there's uh, next to drawing. There's also writing. Uh, we we work with a writer who basically uh, created fictive inhabitants yeah. of this of that structure so it's totally fictive also it's a fiction and then there's a, a theory catalog in the beginning 
where several uh, authors uh, offer certain thoughts regarding uh, the overall experiment. Mm. And, and I would like to show you this yeah. as well. <laughs> that's the, we call it, oh, that's, that's from volume, huh? c'est ça? <laughs> We have a book launch yeah. tonight. So, so this is the, the first volume where, where we show people yeah. in the atelier how they work and how they experiment again with, with materials yeah. and also together when we're working with the photographer who did all these photos. Yeah. So they're all shot by day. <laughs> so we would like to give these to you. Sure. They are for you. Thank you. I think this is, uh, this is the right way, and I'm trying to. People are impatient to one side, and uh, on the side, they have very different imaginations, imaginations very personal. Mm -hmm. And uh, whenever you use techniques, these drawing techniques, I, uh, it was uh, in this kind of uh, 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 drawings uh, in India they published 100 issues and I had a public of about 10 million people. Amazing. And constant and important thing uh, they thought but we can do the same technique and villages were doing using this communication mm -hmm. technique to their own personal problems. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's nice. That's, 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 that's when it works. Mm -hmm. yeah. And surely photography is as well such a technique for us because. Uh, the equipment everybody has it it's today important. yeah uh, in the 70s and 80s in india people mm. did a, a camera. camera yeah mm -hmm. as you know but they could uh, draw and it was very little text but in villages, very often the children were reading it for the elderly, the <laughs> elderly didn't read. Wow. Yeah. So uh, this is uh, the generation. Now in India, probably they have as well the, the photography. Like if I'm thinking the difference in China, I have seen in my, uh, between different visits. Uh, Chinese people became something else, mm -hmm. effectively, mm -hmm. and the same thing we see in the end. And uh, it's probably one of the world problems that the world leaders didn't understand. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that yeah, yeah. people change. Because they don't draw. Sorry. <laughs> because they don't draw. He said, because they don't draw. <laughs> The world leaders. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The world leaders I am in quotation sign. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, 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 like, uh, uh, okay, I was uh, uh, there this winter, California became practically an independent state. Uh, because California decided not to implement. Mm -hmm. Mr. Trump's decision, mm -hmm. yes, mm -hmm. and the American Constitution gives the priority yes. of the, to the state, state, yeah, the state, state yeah. assembly. Mm. Yeah. 
so the, they don't express people, they don't <laughs> make identification. And uh, the same thing will happen here. We have a new president. But the president has no power without the assembly. Mm -hmm. Now let's see the vote in, in five weeks, or when is this? In and the assembly mm -hmm. has no power. If people massively disobey. Yeah. Mm. So let's see. And this happens more often. Mm -hmm. Only in small things it doesn't make the big waves. So you see, we fall back to the communication problem. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And it's. Uh, 